Steps into it. Pass is caught. Diggs. Sideline. Touchdown. Unbelievable. Vikings win it. Strap yourself in and get ready. And here we go. Here we go. The leaders in fantasy football are incoming. Giving you the ultimate insight to help you win your leagues and dominate your mates. You're now listening to the Insight NFL Show with your hosts, Guns and Maverick. Welcome to the NFL. Let's go! Let's go! 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 All right, welcome to, uh, I guess, another episode of the Insight NFL podcast. Today is a bit different. Um, I'm going to be breaking down some footage on one of, uh, in my opinion, one of the sleepers in this draft class. Uh, his name's Tyrone Tracy. Uh, we talked about him in the rookie draft recap uh, in our first podcast that we did. Uh, he's a running back for the New York Giants. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to take you through. Uh, the New York Giants backfield today, we're going to break that down. I, it's just me, but you can tolerate my voice for, well, the best part of 10 or 15 minutes. So, uh, well, let's get straight into it. I've managed to find a video here from uh, Underdog Fantasy, which I'm going to put on the screen now. There it is. Uh, and uh, uh, it'll partially uh, explain what I want to show you, but I'm going to pause it at certain points to uh, just to reflect on some of my own views on Tyrone Tracy as well. Know what to do with him because he just started playing running back. Actually, a crazy story about Tyrone Tracy. He was a wide receiver at Purdue, was not all that productive, and then his running back coach was just daring him to switch positions as a redshirt senior. He said, that's the only way you're going to make it to the league. He committed to that, which is very cool for him to do, and immediately super successful. Number two in EPA per carry, 49% success rates, also rock solid. And then he forced um, a missed tackle on 30% of his touches. That is super impressive stuff. Out in space, he is super elusive. But for somebody that's brand new to the position, I thought he was actually a lot to love. And it wasn't just at Purdue. He was a wide receiver. He was a pass catcher for, for three years at Iowa. Mm -hmm. The same Iowa. Some other numbers that are just fantastic. 5'11". All right. Well, so based off of the first stuff, first little bit of of uh, information that Underdog has uh, given us in that video so, so far. What we know is that he, it's, he's only played one year of running back. So he went to Purdue and then Iowa, or Iowa then Purdue rather, and he was a wide receiver and a kick return, basically. That's all he did. Uh, they used him on like jet sweeps and that, but um, overall, oh, sorry. Holding in a sneeze there. Um, overall, he's very limited in the running back department, but he has played five years of college or six six years of college and five years of wide receiver. Yeah. So, you know, he's got experience. He's, he's played a lot of college football, but not very experienced at running back. Uh, he's 5'11, 209 pounds. Um, he ran a 4.4840, which is well and truly the quickest on that Giants roster. You've got Devin Singletary at 4.66 and Eric Gray at 4.62. Both of them well and truly power backs. Um, he had a, I'll show you the video, rest of the video here, but his physicals are pretty good. He's a very elusive player, very, very, very much an athlete, proper athlete there. Um, my favorite stat, they said, uh, you know, he had a 30% tackle rate break percentage. Um, it's actually higher. He missed 46 missed tackles on 116 carries. So that's a 39.6 broken tackle percentage. Um, the dude is, he, he's got, he's very raw, obviously, playing one year of running back, but there's a lot of signs which point towards him being an NFL caliber running back. Like, even if he's not going to be his high-level elite starter, he's an NFL caliber running back. And the Giants took him 184th or 186th overall. They're way too late in the draft for someone who has these uh, credentials, I suppose. Well, not these credentials. He actually doesn't have any credentials, rather. These uh, potential traits, I think is probably the word I'll use. There's a lot of uh, really good, elusive characteristics about him. 
obviously the broken tackles, the pace. Um, they'll show the rest of the video will continue to show highlights of his uh style of running, but he's a very good stepper, he's good between the tackles, and he's good in outside zone runs as well, which is what we want from our running backs. Um also being a former wide receiver, he's a pretty handy pass catcher out of the backfield. For me, the best player comp is Antonio Gibson. Now, this feels like a bit of a cop-out because he's the most noted uh, wide receiver turn running back that we've got. But if you're getting early career Antonio Gibson production out of Tyrone Tracy, you've got one of the steals of the draft. Anyway, I'll uh, put the video back up and let's see what they've got to say. 11 one five three ten yard split, ninety fourth percentile vert, eighty third percentile broad jump, eighty ninth percentile three cone, and Hayden. His advanced stats when you dig below the surface, Woo. they are almost legendary. Of mm -hmm. the three hundred and forty four players in college football last year with a hundred plus carries, Tyrone Tracy was fourth in missed tackles forced per attempt at point four two, and eleventh in yards after contact per attempt. Like we aren't just talking about great running back metrics for this draft class and creating yards in his own. We're talking all of college football yep. this past season. And that was all despite only getting 1.8 yards handed to him before contact per attempt on average, 71% of his yards mm -hmm. were created on his own. And you see it when watching his tape, the way that he is able to stay up on contact and for a singular season of playing running back on so many of these Purdue carries that asked him to run laterally it wasn't, I'm just going to drift, drift, drift to the sideline and yep. hope to turn the corner. It was, I'm going to put my foot in the dirt, find this tiny little crease mm -hmm. to burst up the field, and then against too high, somehow split both safeties yep. and run right past him. Yep. His film was so much fun yep. to watch. I'd also seen him just kind of like shed off linebacker tackles at the second mm -hmm. level as well. So it's super dynamic out there. Like you said, I did not ever see him dance too much, bounce things outside. He was actually very disciplined and he's very clearly has fresh legs. Even though he is 24 years old, he has what, like 115 touches uh, or carries out there. So I think that he's going to go in there and be a, an explosive weapon for them. I think there's a chance that he just stays as like a classic running back because totally. in his limited touches last year, I thought he was like very good at like the running back type of stuff, which was super interesting. So I have him uh, inside my top 10 running backs. I have an early round four grade right outside the top 100. Uh, I'm not sure where he's going to go uh, because he is so old, but man, his film was fantastic. I think a lot of people are going to compare him to Antonio Gibson, who had a very similar kind of archetype. I thought Antonio Gibson was far less disciplined than Tyrone yep. Tracy as a running back. Uh, he's got about the same exact athletic profile as Chris Evans, who has kind of popped around with the Bengals. But I think that Tyrone Tracy is more accomplished as a runner than Chris Evans. I think there's a chance he could be somewhat like Tony Pollard, who's actually very similar size and speed. Now, Tony Pollard is a fantastic running back. We'll see if Tyrone Tracy could develop into that. But man, the... The shiftiness is real. His yeah. contact balance is real. The size is real. Everything about this, except for just the volume of touches that he's had, uh, is is very real. I thought he was. Yeah. So what we can see here is oh, I've gone split screen. Okay, we'll, we'll work with that. Um, what we can see here is that, you know, as I alluded to, he's an, he's an Antonio Gibson clone, but he's a bit more of an accomplished player in that regard. A bit more disciplined, rather. More disciplined player than what. Antonio Gibson was in college. Um, I mean, look, what are we going to get from Tyrone Tracy this year? I think we're going to get a fair bit. And that leads me to, I suppose, I'm going to go full screen now. Um, that leads me to breaking down the Giants backfield. Now, the Giants attempted 454 uh, rushes last year. Um, running backs did 330 of them. Okay? Now, obviously, you have an elite. You had an elite running back in the building by the name of Saquon Barkley, so he's not there anymore. Two hundred forty-seven carries gone out the window. You bring in Devin Singletary, who's only handled two hundred carries once in his career, and it led to his lowest yards per carry in his career so far, and that was last year at Houston. He had two hundred and uh, I think it was two hundred and sixteen carries and went at four point two yards per carry. So he like it's solid, but he's he's historically been a more four point five point four point six. Yards per carry rusher, albeit 
in a very, very accomplished Buffalo Bills team. So he's played in two very good teams for his whole career. He's played in this rising Houston Texans team, and he's played for uh, the Buffalo Bills since he got drafted back in, I'm going to say 2018. Yeah, we'll go with 2018. So he's had many years with really good teams, and now he's going to probably the worst team in the NFL, or second worst. Um, It's not going to be pretty, right? Like, is he going to be running, rushing above four yards per carry? I'll be shocked. It's a good year if he has, right? Um, but then in saying that, like, you just just looking at the Giants' O line, like they still managed to get Saquon close to a thousand yards last year. Um, there's def- there was definitely a lot of opportunities for their quarterbacks to run: Tommy DeVito, Daniel Jones, Tyrod Taylor, whoever it was. They were allowed to run, so they can clearly run block, but they're, they're terrible pass blockers. That's a different. That's not related to running backs, though. They're, all we care about the Giants' backfield is how the O line holds up blocking. They're okay. Um, you can definitely get production out of the run game here, and I think they're going to be leaning on it a heck of a lot with the subpar quarterback play that they've got on that roster. Like Daniel Jones is the starter, and he's just come off an ACL tear. You. It could be he could be benched pretty early on in the season. Uh, Drew Locke, you know, although he was um, amazing for Seattle when he filled in for Geno Smith last year, he's he's never really kicked on as an NFL starter. Tommy DeVito, like, you know, he pretty much hit his ceiling last year. And then Nathan Rourke's the fourth quarterback in line. I don't know if he'll even make the roster. Probably not. Or maybe he's on the practice squad, but. We're sort of looking at this in the sense that if their their offense should be pretty split 50-50 in terms of run and throw. Right. Now, uh, what do I personally think will happen? I still think Devin Singletary handles the vast workload for the uh, Giants, but Tyron Tracy can carve himself out a pretty neat role. Um, I've got him sort of he can push, I reckon he will land in the vicinity of uh, 100 carries this year. It, it, I, it's not, it feels wrong to say for someone who's 184th overall to come in and almost demand a split backfield. But it's split in the sense that two-thirds of the work's going, going to Singletary and one-third's going to Tracy, right? Like, it, it's, it's still very much Singletary's backfield. It's just that Tyrone Tracy has the traits to be a proper NFL running back. And as we've just seen the guys at Underdog Fantasy break down, like he he's very polished for someone who's only played one year. Obviously, he's inexperienced, but that hasn't actually made him a raw prospect. Like He's got all the traits to be a high-level NFL, not to be a starting NFL running back. He's got all the traits to be a starting NFL running back. And I think that's that's really exciting because... You know, he's going fourth, fifth round in rookie mock drafts right now, and that's extraordinary value. I'm not saying he's going to do this, but Puka Nakua was going at around a similar value last year. He's not Puka Nakua. I'm just going to stop that there. But there always seems to be some value really late in the draft or after the draft, and I think this year it's Tyrone Tracy personally. Um, I'm looking to get him where pot when pot where and when possible. Um, would I trade for him? Uh, yeah, probably would. I'd just say, look, Devin Singletary is there. He's going to be handling two thirds of the. He's going to be handling the vast workload, right? You just talk it up that way, and if you can, if you can convince them to disregard the angle that, well, Tyron Tracy's actually not a bad player himself. If they haven't done their research on Tyron Tracy, you can pick him up for a pretty cheap deal. You could throw. I don't know. A, third round pick next year for Tyrone Tracy this year, and I reckon they take it, because they're, not, they're, they're thinking, oh, sweet, I, I picked him up off waivers and I get a free pick. Oh, nice. Well, Tracy can come in, and the ceiling is, and you're not buying him for this ceiling, it's just something that can happen. The ceiling is he beats out freaking uh, Kevin Singletary, right? Like, there's a lot to like about 
there's not a lot to like about the Giants team, but that means there's a lot of opportunity for Tyrone Tracy to come in and announce himself in the NFL. Uh, let's see uh, what these guys are. He was unafraid of finishing with a forward lean and on contact. He didn't always pick up short yarded situations, but I don't think it was due to a, a, a lack of effort. Mm -hmm. I think he's very much willing to get in the dirt, get muddy in the trash over the middle of the field. My comparisons are even up a notch compared to yours. Okay. okay. I've been doing this for a while. So I remember David Johnson coming out of Northern Iowa as oh, almost this raw athlete who during his first year with bruce arians in arizona bruce arians basically wanted nothing to do with him put him on mm -hmm. kick return he would go back there and return a few and then every once in a while he would get opportunities and okay. then like a couple years later led the nfl basically in yards at the position i'm not saying that tyrone chase is going to do that but coming from the same running style the somehow 209 pounds but also looking slender at the exact same time and then just mm -hmm. galloping beyond people uh, our buddy Brett Coleman just posted a Cordero Patterson comparison, which is very apt from the wide receiver to running back and also the creativity and the contact balance as a runner. And then heck Hayden, I think as a rookie, if he doesn't get a full workload, I could see him having a Tajay Spears S sure. impact of oh, creating yeah. explosive plays. And I was a massive Tajay Spears fan heading into last year's class. So like you can even do some of the jet sweep stuff with him too. the mm -hmm. push passes, get him in motion. And in fact, as weird as it sounds, I thought the receiving aspect of his game this past season was far less desirable, far less right. memorable than the yeah. rushing aspects that we saw in yeah. his lone season, his yeah. one season of ever being a running back. And I think that's a, that's a good thing, not a bad thing, that he totally. wasn't just a like, manufactured guy. Like He was actually doing all the stuff. Those guys that you comp to obviously would be a massive smash if he was able to do that. Those guys seem a little bigger than what Tyron Tracy is, but at the same time, maybe he puts on a couple of pounds here just because... He's new to the position. So I would not be surprised if he ended up as one of the very best running backs in the class. Obviously, his range of outcomes are massive. You can go to the NFL, not get a good grasp of things and be out uh, of the league very quickly. He also just has the athletic traits that I'm looking for. In a few different ways, especially at this class, the quarterback position, you know, uh, physical development. And maybe that's the case here with skill positions, wide receivers and running backs where, and I know we have transfers and, and IL and all this stuff. But a 24-year-old is going to be more physically developed than yeah. 18, 19, 20, 21-year-olds that he is facing off against. But what you're talking about with interviews, there's also a massive mental maturity on top of it, which probably allowed him and helped him learn on the fly uh, a totally new position. Um, but just think of how different you are as a 19-year-old versus a 24 year old you know like your yeah. your your brain <laughs> development uh your understanding and awareness of everything around you is is so much greater mm -hmm. um i will add on top of that zero under center runs but that's not to say that purdue didn't force him to work in the middle of the field in a conference that does still play a lot of traditional style football like he went up against michigan and you just saw him slalom ski mm -hmm. between first second and third level defenders on that Michigan Wolverines defense. He is one of my favorite players yes. in this class. Oh, yeah. Bar none. And I understand yeah. the... Yeah. So, obviously, a pretty glowing endorsement there from Underdog. And I think there is definitely a path where um, he's one of the better backs in this draft class. Like, I personally think Jonathan Brooks will be the best running back in this class, followed by Trey Benson. But um, I would have Tyrone Tracy. The ceiling is probably third. Um, and then, as I mentioned, you know, the floor, he could be out of the league in a year, right? But let's say you, you, if, you're, if you haven't done a rookie mock draft yet, if you haven't done a rookie draft even, not just a rookie mock draft, if you haven't done a rookie draft yet, and you're a championship team or you're competing for the championship, so if you're, let's, let's call it a 12-man league, if you're picking anywhere from 6 to 12, top half of the league, if you're in the top half of the league and you think you're competing this year, and you've got one of those final six picks in a three-round draft, I'm taking him. I'm taking him if I've got any of those six picks. I'm taking him as early as middle of the third round. The upside is is really quite high. Um, personally, for me, like he, he can push towards this 650, 700 yards from scrimmage sort of guy. Um, you know, you give him 100 carries, if he's going at you know, there or thereabouts at four yards a carry and then 50 catches 
out of the backfield. Not unrealistic considering what's likely to happen with his offense where it's Malik Neighbors with a smattering of Wandale Robinson and checkdowns. That's really what this offense is going to be for um, the Giants. And to say that other guys are involved at times, potentially, like Wanda Robinson's a pretty solid player. Darius Slayton has always had around 70 targets for them, but the focal points are going to be Malik Neighbors. Um, Wanda Robinson, they like, so he will be featured heavily in this offense, but think about it completely is the Malik Neighbors show, and then on the ground, it's a ch- Tyrone Tracy is a change of pace back. Now, how split can this backfield get? Um, I've got it as 200 carries to Singletary and 100 to Tracy and like 30 to 40 for Eric Gray as well. Eric Gray should be a non-factor. He fumbled it three times last year on the 60 yards from scrimmage. Like, that's really crap, right? Um, he's not a good player and uh, I can't imagine he'll be in the league much longer with if he's fumbling at that rate, you know? But if you look at um, they use the example of Tony Pollard, and I think it's a good example, you know. Uh, very similar build, as they mentioned, and they can def- they can definitely use, they use Tony Pollard as their pass catcher for Dallas back in 2022, but I still think Zeke handled the majority of the workload, but Tony Pollard was the back you wanted in fantasy, right? So there's a bit of that. Obviously, Pollard, it was a much more 50-50 split rather than two-thirds, one-third, which is what I'm projecting. But the ceiling is Tony Pollard's sort of style of play, right? Maybe not as explosive um, because – and he's not playing as behind as good of an O-line as well, right? There's also that. But, you know, in terms of volume, that's the ceiling, Turn up Tony Pollard's style of volume from 2022. Um, for me, I don't think he'll completely take over this backfield first year could happen in 2025, but I think you're really looking this year at Tony at Tony Pollard at uh at Tyrone Tracy being just that that uh I'm trying to put the words together that change of pace back who's going to do some pass catching who's going to pop up in highlight reels a fair bit, but you know he's going to have volatile scoring, but for a championship roster in Dynasty. He's a gem. He's an absolute gem because, you know, a couple of years down the track, he could be the starter. Next year, he could be the starter. End of this year, he could be the starter. There's, if he impresses enough and he keeps on this upward trajectory as a running back, which he's shown massive strides in, in college, I get that, as they mentioned, massive physical development gap between uh, a 24-year-old and a 19, 20-year-old, which is what he's been faced, which is what he faced for the most part last year, but to say that he can't continue to develop, even if it's not go from zero to hero like he did last year, to say that he can't continue to develop as an NFL running back, or, yeah, as an NFL running back, would be quite surprising. I don't think he just jumps straight out of the league. I think, as these guys reckon, I think he hits. I think he's going to be probably in the conversation for one of the steals of the draft. Uh, let's watch the rest of this video. Stand the red flags of his age. And sure, you right. can say it's just one productive season. But just wonder if yeah. he played running back a bit earlier on. I guarantee you we would see more productive seasons yeah. in this. And despite the age, I think that with running backs, it's equally as important as the age. It's just the amount of hits that you've taken. I think that's why we have this age cliff, which I really think is like more of a carries cliff. And Tyrone Tracy has the freshest legs in the draft class. He's never been tackled, basically, uh, because of his profile before all this. So, uh, yeah, being old is is a huge red flag. But I think that it's going to work against him a little bit less just because he does seem uh, so damn fresh. By far, my favorite surprise player when I turned on the tape was not expecting this. So many times, these guys that are are touted as, as sleepers that are these weird profiles, you watch them and immediately you're like, no, you're Izzy Abandicanda. Tyrone Tracy's got a little something to him that was very real. I think like everyone wants Malachi Corley to be this fun, darling, manufactured touch guy and athletic. Tyrone Tracy is that at the running back position, but actually, actually has it. He does have work to do in pass pro, which is not a concern. His initial contact is a lunge. 
I thought he struggled at times to, to mirror and sustain, but at the same time, I thought he was quite good at identifying and being willing to pick up these free rushers. Again, we talked about these defenses that they faced. He was very readily identifying those guys working inside and out and finding those, those free defenders. I want him to work. I know I, I could see a team falling in love with him and taking yeah. him in round three yeah. and just being like, Hey, none of the other running backs in this class yeah. offer this. They might've seen, like what Rashad White did last season and say, hey, we can replicate that a little bit here with Tyrone Tracy. Uh, just such a fun play. Did you go back and watch his Iowa wide receiver stuff at all? No, I did not. I did. Do you? Uh, I think it's a smart move. They do have to running back. <laughs> I mean, he's <laughs> he was trying like to run slam the game. Yeah. And, and kind of clap at the uh, football. Um, but he did also run. He was an ex receiver, Hayden. He was an isolated outside wide receiver. See more and more of these wide receiver to running back conversions yeah. at the college level, just out of necessity. And maybe mm -hmm. Tyrone Tracy is one of the first of those. That's really interesting. At the last seconds, make the switch over because everybody wants to play wide receiver. So. Cordero Patterson. We still need running backs. We still need running backs. All right. Speaking of, go and watch the rest of the prospect videos we have on the channel. All right. Well. If that was not an endorsing review of Tyrone Tracy, then I don't know what is. That's, uh, yeah, it just confirms what I was sort of looking at. And just to me, tells me that, you know, we do really do, we do really have something here in Tyrone Tracy. Um, you know, I personally, I, I, I might be too high on him, but also at the same time, like the, ev the proof is in the pudding in this regard, I suppose, because. You could see from the tape that I've just shown you, thanks to Underdog Fantasy, by the way, that um, you're gonna get you're gonna get some really good uh, yards after contact. He's a very he's a tackle buster. Although he looks rather slender, he's not like he, he's built five eleven two oh nine. Like that's not light at all. Um, I think you can get some really good production out of him, and I think. He has the potential to be one of these steals of the draft, particularly at pick one eighty four. Like he's he's really only slipped because of his age, right? And the fact he's new to the running back position. So played one year there. He's twenty four years old. But as as these guys mentioned, running backs really about how many carries you get. You get a ton of carries. It's usually if you're a starter from the moment you enter the NFL. You've usually got six, seven years, eight years of production before you fall off a cliff because of wear and tear, right? Well, if we're talking six, seven, eight years, he's not to mention these guys have usually done two or three years of, of starting running back work in college. Like the guys had one and it wasn't even a full workload, it was 100 carries. There's 100 carries in college, that's it. Um, in terms of physical fatigue, like he's not really felt it yet. He has not played that much. But the physical traits were there last year. We saw it. We know he's a he's a former wide receiver. Yeah, they those guys weren't as high on his receiving game, but like regardless, he's sort of he's got the traits in his he's got the traits built into him of being a part a noted pass catcher. You know? So they the Giants can continue if the Giants can continue to develop the pass catching element of Tyrone Tracy's game as well as continue his development as a runner. You know, we're getting this we're slowly moving towards this three down back that the Giants may have unearthed in the fifth round of a draft, like or sixth round, I don't know which round, in the late rounds of the draft, but you know, really high on him. Uh, yeah. The Devin Singletary, two hundred. He's going to have two hundred carries this year. He'll still do. He'll have some catches out of the backfield, but he's not a pass catcher. He would have had like a hundred receiving yards last year, or maybe nine or ten catches. Like, you know, that's just because I'm really not expecting him to catch the football. Right? He's not a known pass catcher, um, but he's going to have a lot of work to do. You know, he's going to have to push towards this eight hundred nine. He's going to be pushing towards seven fifty to eight hundred and fifty. Uh, yards and if the Giants O line outperforms what we expect, he can push for nine hundred to a thousand. Um, but yeah, he's not. He has never handled more than two hundred and sixteen carries in a season. I don't think he's got it in him to handle two hundred and sixteen more than that in a season. That's why he's never got it. 
So clearly there's a role for Tyrone Tracy there. I think as we get closer to the start of the season, we get Tyrone Tracy's draft stock's going to skyrocket. So if you can get onto your league commissioner or you are the league commissioner, if you can start your draft now, you're going to get Tyrone Tracy at a massive bargain because he's going in the fourth round. If you're doing a big rookie draft, he's going in the fourth round, fifth round sort of thing. Whilst right now, by the time the season comes around, rather, I think he'll be a middle to early third round pick. And would I be willing to pay that? Yeah, probably. Particularly if he's getting half the workload. Like he's going to be producing second round draft pick production. And you can draft him in the third round. It's still value, but you can get him in you can get him in the fourth or the last pick or on waivers right now. It makes sense just to make that move early. If you have the ability to do so, I really would. And I, I encourage it greatly. Uh yeah. So that's that's just that's it for the special piece. Um, there there could be one or two more that come out. There might not be. Um, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, look. I think these going into these specials and looking at these uh, unique situations where we don't really know what's going to happen in the backfield or on this offense. I think looking at these in depth will really help us in. Uh, just wrapping our heads around how to how to view these things, and you know who's the real beneficiary in this in this team, and who should I be targeting in my drafts? You know, uh, I should comment on Tracy's stock in redra- in redraft. Um, it's a tough one. It's a tough one because he's either on wait, he's either a non-factor, and he's on waivers week three, and we were all wrong about him, or he's come out and he shot the lights out. Now, personally. I'm taking him in the last round of my draft, if at all. I think I think I'd take him in the last round. Yeah, I'd be happy to take him in the last round. But if someone takes him in that last round or was willing to reach for him, you know, I'm not losing sleep, right? But if he's there in the last round, you've got this guy that is likely to have over 500 yards of scrimmage this year. If he continues this development path that he's been on and that we can we we envision him pursuing, ah uh, yeah, so that's the end of today's video. Um, they will be. I think we're about to cover. You'll see wide receivers will either be out by now or coming up shortly. Um, we've just covered running backs. Uh, we've got tight ends to do, and there'll be some rookie drafts coming up. It's gonna it's exciting times here at Inside NFL. Um, as always. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe if you're viewing us on YouTube. And if you're um, listening on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, drop us a five-star review and, uh, you know, subscribe to us and even download an episode or two. Um, Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.